Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The House of Assembly to debate the estimates of revenue and expenditure 2019-2020 in the sum of $1.5 billion. The ECCB becomes the first central bank in the Caribbean to issue polymer notes. The PTOR's management area UNESCO club is launched. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. The fourth session of the 11th Parliament is scheduled for Tuesday, April 9, 2019. Members of the House of Assembly will meet at 10 a.m. and members of the Senate will meet at 10.30 a.m., after which both houses will meet in joint session to receive a message from His Excellency, the Governor-General Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack. The Standing Finance Committee will meet in closed session thereafter to review the estimates of revenue and expenditure 2019-2020 in the sum of $1,591,589,000. A sitting of the House of Assembly is scheduled for Wednesday, April 10, 2019, at 2 p.m., where the debates on the estimates will begin and continue for the rest of the week. Meantime, the estimates of revenue and expenditure signals the presentation of the Appropriations Bill 2019-2020, commonly referred to as the budget. The budget process is a lengthy and involved one. A budget is a financial plan which details one's projected income and expenditure. It is something that is done not just by average households and businesses, but government. Revenue and expenditure is normally estimated to determine whether there is a surplus or deficit. Typically, revenue would be derived from taxes imposed on citizens, as well as grants given by friendly governments or donor agencies. Critical for government is its expenditure, which can be current or capital expenditure. The acting budget director explained the difference between the two. Well, current expenditure would normally involve expenditure on your normal operations. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, you pay salaries, um, your utility bills and so on. So you have lots of fixed expenses that would be included as part of current expenditures. Mm -hmm. So for the government, for instance, wages and salaries, um, the debt servicing, the interest payments that are um, on the debt that the government has actually raised for a given year or in previous years, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, subsidies that are given, grants, contributions, subventions, all of these things are considered to be part of the current um, government's current expenditure. As it relates to capital expenditure, it normally would entail the acquisition of assets. While the budget is presented every year, the process is actually a 24-month cycle. Once the appropriation um, bill is, is passed, um, the government would generally issue what is called a general warrant, mm -hmm. which um, allows ministries to be able to spend against the consolidated fund, mm -hmm. um, although there are provisions that al would allow you to be able to spend prior to that. But generally speaking, this is the, the, the mechanism that um, is usually used. Once a budget is passed, mm -hmm. by the end of March, mm -hmm. you have your general warrant that allows you to be able to, to spend. Once that is done, you begin to execute. And as you execute, you begin to plan for the next fiscal year. And mm -hmm. with respect to the government, the planning aspect actually would, um, much of the planning aspect would actually take place or commence closer to July, August. The full interview with the acting budget director Paula Joseph will air on NTN on Monday, April 8, 2019. Still with Money Matters, in two months, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the ECCB, will achieve a first for the region. The ECCB will issue banknotes made out of polymer. Anissa Antoine reports. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank is preparing to release the new EC polymer notes. The polymer notes will co-circulate with the currently existing paper notes. The circulation will commence with the new $50 bill in June, followed by the $100, $20 and $10 banknotes in August and September. Acting Director in the Currency Management Department of the ECCB, Rosbert Humphrey, explained that the polymer notes are a more durable medium of exchange and is expected to outlast the paper notes. We do not want persons to 
crumple the banknotes, right, or crease those acute creases to the banknotes, right? Like I said before, the banknotes, they have the polymer banknotes, they have memory. So those creases and crumples tend to, you know, be in the banknotes almost permanently and can cause the banknotes to be unfit for circulation in quick time. All right, we do not want persons to iron the banknotes, mm -hmm. right? Unlike the paper banknotes, I mean, these notes will be damaged. You would definitely need an iron and a banknote if that has to happen, right? It will compromise the features of the banknote. Because note. the polymer notes have an increased number of security features, reducing the possibility for counterfeiting. Humphrey explained that a tangible feature was also added, making the notes user-friendly to the visually impaired. The tactile feature are some raised bumps that are on the notes. They form shapes that the blind and visually impaired persons can relate to. They can feel and know which denomination they have, you know, in their position. So we have a circle on the five. We have an X on the tens. And the X is easy to remember because that's the Roman numeral for ten. Right? We have a rectangle on the twenty, a triangle on the fifties, and a square on the hundreds. We recognize that um, in the Eastern Caribbean, um, not many blind and visually impaired persons can read Braille. So it would have been a disadvantage to them if we actually put Braille on the banknotes because, I mean, they wouldn't recognize um, what the features are, what, the, what the, um, the bumps are. So we decided to put something that the blind and the visually impaired persons, as a matter of fact, the general public can relate to, easily relate to. The ECCB will be the first central bank in the Caribbean to issue all notes in polymer material. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. The nation's youth have been presented with an avenue to increase their participation in heritage, biodiversity conservation and promotion. The Peter Management Area PME Office within the Department of Sustainable Development, in collaboration with the St. Lucia National Commission for UNESCO, established the PME UNESCO Club. Establishment of the PMA UNESCO Club is in keeping with SDG 17, which encourages and supports effective public, private and civil society partnerships. UNESCO clubs, according to PMA's Protected Areas Manager, Augustine Dominique, will have three main functions, training, dissemination of information and action, action being the essential condition for the existence of a UNESCO club. It's important and critical that we establish a PMA UNESCO club. As a small office, we can't do everything that we would like to do on our own. So it gives you an opportunity to engage. It gives you an opportunity to grow. It's, it gives you an opportunity to, to participate and leave the principles of UNESCO. Humanity, sharing, personal growth, equity, all of them. It is expected that the PMA UNESCO Club will help to increase youth engagement in heritage and biodiversity conservation and promotion and collective action through training, information sharing and advocacy. Secretary General for St. Lucia National Commission for UNESCO, Marcia Symphorian, highlighted the importance of such collaborations. Our decision to encourage and facilitate the development of UNESCO clubs is because we understand that we need to build partnerships in the interest of development. So in that regard, UNESCO clubs have always and continue to contribute meaningfully to the achievement of the organization's mandate. Perhaps more importantly, the clubs provide an opportunity to bring to bear fresh perspectives, new ideas on the way that the organization handles the many challenges facing the global community. In the face of increasing financial constraints, the implementation of large-scale programs and projects is not always possible. And for UNESCO in particular, the loss of significant financial resources in recent times underscores the need to explore alternative methods and approaches to achieving the desired outcomes in our various sectors. The PMA UNESCO Club will be an affiliate of the PMA office, but will function as an independent, not-for-profit organization governed by a constitution approved at its inaugural meeting. Its management team will comprise students, interested youth, PMA office advisors, teachers, mentors, and representatives of the National Commission for UNESCO. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next.
Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello and welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, in partnership with the Monipur Athletics Academy and Vidbutai Secondary School, hosted the second school's pole vault clinic of 2019 on Tuesday this week. Over 40 students from 10 schools around the island participated in this clinic, approximately half of whom were exposed to the pole vault event for the very first time. Students were divided into beginner, intermediate and advanced groups and taken through a complete warm-up, drill stations that focus on the approach, plan, takeoff, and swing-up phases of the event. After going through drill stations, students had a chance to apply their new skills on the runway, clearing their very first bars. Program director and coach Andy Bell was impressed by the attitudes of both the boys and girls participants, who, collectively, showed some of their best potential the nation has ever seen in the event. Clivers Jules, Andre Rodney and four-time Carifta Games medalist Shem Edward provided expertise during the clinic as assistants and the school teachers who attended continued to develop in their understanding of the event, assisting with drills and guiding students. The clinic marked another step forward towards the establishment of a boys and girls school pole vault championship the initial championship exhibition is tentatively scheduled for the night of December 12, 2019, with the 2020 edition being planned as a fully-fledged championship event for the schools. The 2019 schools volleyball competition ended Thursday with the finals of both male and female categories at the VG Malipopa Sports Complex. Sir Arthur Lewis emerged male champs when they defeated St. Mary's College in two straight sets, 25-10, 25-14. The female honours went to Leon Hess Comprehensive after beating St. Joseph's Convent two sets to one, 25-21, 23-25, 15-13. In the men's third place playoff, Leon Hess won over Corinth 25-8, 25-18. And in the female third place contest, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College defeated Soufre in two straight, 25-12, 25-5. In the semi-finals played Tuesday, female category, Leon Hess Comprehensive won over Soufre Comprehensive, two games to love, 25-20, 25-18, and St. Joseph's Convent got the better of Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, two love, 26-24, 29-27. The scoreline there certainly showing a very closely fought semi-final. In the male category, St. Mary's College won over Leon Hess two games to one, 1925, 25-17, 15-13. Sir Arthur Lewis Community College had an easier time against Corinth, winning two games to love, 25-11, 25-4. The Youth Empowerment Project is an intervention by the government of St. Lucia aimed at mitigating risk factors that result in antisocial incidents. Local communities are also being called upon to play a large part in alleviating such incidents. Joanne Husbands is project coordinator. We will be providing support through counseling um, and providing a, a case management approach to that um, particular youth. So it will be on an individual uh, basis where the package or the program will be tailored to, to suit whatever circumstance that youth is facing. So if particularly the youth may have um, social issues as well, a wraparound officer will also be attached to the, 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 the child and their, their families to have um, overall um, so, um, social service to, you know, to, to provide support to the family. They will also have attached the literacy and numeracy coordinators and along with um, whether it may be uh, the individual may have drug drug and substance abuse problems, a drug counsellor will also be on the, the team and also a guidance counsellor. The first scheduled event for Youth Month 2019, the Team Action International Incorporated Speech Festival, ended at the Financial Centre Thursday. Dr. Paul Fort 
is the chairman of Team Action International Incorporated. Thai Speech Festival really includes four training programs. One, poetry reading. Two, public speaking. Three, debating. And the fourth program are shows. Basically, a debate show, a public speaking show, and a poetry show. Today, this afternoon, is Activate Talks. All the programs come school with Activate Talks. Activate Talks is basically a series of talks organized by UNICEF where young people are given the opportunity to give their views on a particular topic, what they think, what their thoughts are. In this case, it's corporal punishment. Because May 1st, St. Lucia will abolish corporal punishment within schools in, Bar in St. Lucia. And it's basically so because of the ratification agreement they would have had with UNICEF as they signed out the Convention of Rights back in the day. The Activate Talks this evening, as I said, basically focuses on that. So we get five participants to speak on the, the topic itself, then a general panel discussion to basically see what young people are thinking about the decision that's made. Youth Month was officially launched on Friday. And that's our update for this week. I'm Ryan O'Brien, wishing you a pleasant and safe weekend. Thanks, Ryan. The legislative framework to govern the Caribbean Electric Utility Services Corporation headquarters agreement has been passed. The legislation brings into law an agreement signed between the Prime Minister of St. Lucia and the Caribbean Electric Utility Services Corporation, Carilec, a non-profit organization which has chosen to institutionalize its headquarters in St. Lucia on April 11, 2018. Article 4 of the agreement highlights the benefits of the, of the establishment of Carilec to St. Lucia and the Caribbean as including the creation of direct employment, providing indirect employment for numerous technical and general service personnel in communications, transportation, housing and equipment, and obtaining foreign exchange. There is no doubt, Madam President, that the Headquarters Act and Agreement does bring tremendous benefit to the people of St. Lucia and to our economy in general. Carilec is an association of electric utilities, suppliers, manufacturers, and other stakeholders operating in the electricity industry in the Caribbean, whose mission is to enhance the effectiveness of its members by providing industry-related services, creating regular networking, training, and knowledge-sharing opportunities, supporting mutual assistance programs, and being an advocate for the industry throughout the Caribbean. The association was established in 1989 with nine members as part of an electric utilities modernization project funded by USAID. Privileges and, immu and immunities are provided to Carilect under Article 8 of the agreement. These requirements or these require exemptions from taxes including customs duties, value added tax and service charge. Therefore, Madam President, Domestic legislation is required to give effect to the agreement. The obligations expressed in the agreement with respect to exemptions from taxes may then be addressed in the different laws. Currently, Carilec comprises a total of 106 members. This includes 35 full members that are electric utilities and 66 associate members that are companies involved in some aspect of servicing the electric utility business and four affiliate members. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castry City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur Tarnisha, Monsieur Madame, Department qui n'est responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, ACBP Télévision Nationale, PIA, NTN. Qu'est-ce que vous avez 
Nouvelle Acoyol, présente au Primus Hutchinson. Legislation a concept de Ville Castri pour établir la police en bas conduite concept là, qui a fait et puis consultation chef police PIA, c'est ministre qui est responsable pour la justice et la sécurité nationale, on est à Romangel Francis qui fait déclaration ça là, du session Sénat là, oui, c'est moi. Selon le ministre là, après moi, ces police là, qui a aussi considéré pour voir avec l'autre l'avantage que la police ni en bas loi qui a gouverné l'opération organisation police à cette ici. Sénateur Romangel a ajouté que la aussi une provision pour ce police à la trouver armé et uniforme avec l'autre nécessité. Sénateur a expliqué que Yo, c'est une ces raison, ça là, si officier police dans cette ville Castri, j'ai trouvé autorisation pour arrêter. C'est parce que yo a ni à présent pour conduire des voies en l'autre place, côté yo pe a pu suivre et bien oui, crime qu'a fait. Par exemple, si un officier police dans cette ville Castri, il pe en ville Gozile, yon a vendu du souhait, et pendant qu'il a eu un crime qu'a fait, il s'est arrêté mouna, là même. En J, il a inspiré pour juste les à l'autre police sortir en code garde Gozile Rivé. Après ça, il s'est passé mon sala pour ces polices là. Mais la sécurité a expliqué aussi la situation ça là, ça marchait en même façon pour la police en port Castri. Parce que toutes ces polices là ont trouvé le même degré d'étrennement. Et c'est la principale raison que le gouvernement a implémenté la législation. Le ministre Francis a remarqué que ces polices considèrent la ville Castri. Qui a placé attention seulement en ville Castri et qui travaille et travaille au pas ça affecté en pièce façon opération c'est le sort de police pays. Francis Chicane qui depuis ces polices concernant ville Castri venir en opération en ville Castri il a accompli un haut degré de sécurité. Ministre de sécurité a déclaré que l'année preuve pour montrer que depuis tant ces polices pour concernant ville Castri a existence la journée y a une réduction un crime contre le terrorisme avec l'autre étranger qui a visité cette ici. Le cultivateur, eh bien, Pharma, qui n'a pas dit en bas de la terre, qui a cultivé, j'ai trouvé une initiative pour renforcer l'habilité et aussi la commune qui a habité. Façon pour organiser et ménager la situation des as, un risque pour faire agricole. Tout ça qu'a fait à effort pour protéger et faire plus, plus brigand contre la situation des as. Ça vient en réalité par une agence italienne pour le développement des corporations et l'implémentation et ça qu'a fait par un gymnage entre agences pour le ménagement des as à Caribla. C'est demain. Institut de météorologie Caribla, une fondation internationale italienne pour recherche à son environnement et l'Organisation Nations Unies. Pour faire manger agricole, ça c'est FEO, c'est tout ça ensemble qui travaille pour faire ça en réalité. Il y a un grand grec FEO spécialiste, Daniel Barelli, déclaré que ce pays a un jour qui est très sensible pour toutes sortes de qualités de as et qu'il n'y a pas de pièce de différence à cette ici. Daniel dit que chaque dollar qui est dépensé pour préparer pour les désastres, à peu près 5 minutes qui sont sauvés pour adresser les désastres. Il dit que il n'y a pas que c'est ici qu'il est là pour travailler en proportion et l'autre façon pour adresser le changement climat en secteur agricole. Il y a un autre grec, un autre grec, qui a créé la Fondation des recherches pour adresser à faire l'environnement qui il travaille dans la main en main. Et puis l'autre organisation en haut 10 mois pour implémenter le projet Sala. Si vous n'avez pas le ministère de l'Agriculture, Barry Moore Felicia, dit que le projet Sala a directement le projet RICH. Ça, c'est le projet Rich là. Il m'a marqué que tous ces sujets qui ont trouvé adressés, comme protection de l'environnement, pour utiliser et entretenir les ressources naturelles, avec la pêche, avec l'autre façon, pour réduire à ce désastre naturel, qui a embrassé le agricole pour cette ci depuis l'année 2016 pour 2021. Le gouvernement cette ci a placé l'honneur et titre officiel à ce Levin Spencer comme ambassade pour le sport et la jeunesse pour cette ci c'est Honorable Ezekiel Joseph qui fait un annoncement à la Padin et qui a position comme Premier ministre de un spécial dîner à l'honneur Spencer vendredi le 39 mars à Sandals Grand. Pour l'honneur officiel à la Spencer a eu un stop pour commémorer ce qu'il a accompli en sport 
et aussi qu'il trouve un loto et qu'il y a une facilité pour vous porter nous. Dans les salles, qu'il y a 20 ans depuis le 20 ans, qu'il y a représenté cette liste en high jump. Et pour 15 fois, il y a trouvé sélecté comme femme de sport. Pour l'année, il y a aussi gagné plusieurs médailles internationales. Le ministère des Travaux et Construction a continué à ce projet pour bâtir Bawad à ce chemin PIA pour aider et prouver à sa protection, particulièrement le chemin qui risque de se faire. La jambe est à peu près 100 mètres de Bawad qui a bâti à ce chemin de nuit pour White Rock. Le ministère a fait chauffer l'auto à ce moment-là. Il y a fait ce qu'il y a fait. Il y a eu la confiance qui a été en place, la protection pour sauver la vie. Pas la vie seulement, mais aussi la vie des passagers. Quatrième session de votre parlement, qui a été mardi le 9 avril, membre de Conseil qui a été assemblé à 10h bon matin, et membre Sénat là qui a été joué ensemble à 10h30 bon matin. Après ça, côté tous les deux qui a été joué ensemble, à la session, vous recevrez un message de la gouverneur général Emmanuel Neville Snack. Le comité des finances qui a été assemblé à la session à 10h30 bon matin, le 9 avril, pour recevoir l'estimation du budget qui a été assemblé mercredi le 10 avril à 10h après-midi, jeudi le 11 avril et vendredi le 12 à 9h bon matin pour tenir des pas à ce budget. À ce budget. Le comité des finances qui a aussi présenté un rapport, qui a été adopté un rapport du comité des finances à ce budget pour l'année 2019 pour 2020, en hauteur de 1 million 691 millions de dollars, 689 000 dollars. Et ça, c'est côté. Nous avons trouvé une nouvelle, nous. Je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie l'invitation. Pour que je ne puisse pas considérer le conseil de la vie, côté vous avez présenté une autre nouvelle. Je vous remercie à tout le monde qui a gardé un bon financement semaine. Et nous avons vu pour Nisha. Merci, on Pill Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair to partly cloudy with a few showers. The Atlantic High Pressure System will continue to generate a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow and rough seas around the Eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low-level clouds drifting along the wind flow will bring some scattered showers over the islands during the forecast period. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 4.16 p.m. and will be low again at 9.48 p.m. The tide for VFO Bay was high at 5.23 p.m. and will be low again at 11.15 p.m. The sea is moderate to locally rough with waves 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.56 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.